how to create a simple procedural skybox shader that will serve as the base for more complex effects. Find out in this video. I've already covered this topic before, which is one of the most popular video on this channel. Now nothing's wrong with that video, but I decided to revisit the topic with a slightly optimized shader, a better pacing, and a lot better audio quality. For the tutorial, I'm using Unity 6, and my project is set up in URP. Alright, let's get started. Okay, I have an empty scene here. Now first thing I want to do is create a subgraph. So right click, create, shader graph, and subgraph. I will call it simple sky and double click to open it. Here I have an output node that expects a vector 4, but I will deal with it later. First I will create a position node. Keep the space to world space or in case you are in HDRP, select absolute world space. It will give me the position of each fragment of the skybox in world space. I will normalize it using normalize node. Now I essentially have direction of each skybox fragment from the world's origin. I will split it using split node. It will split the vectors components and this RGBA can also be called XYZW. They are basically the same thing. I will use this Y component. Let me just show you. I will have value of 1 at the top. Then it will linearly goes to 0 at the middle. Then in the bottom, I will have negative values that linearly goes up to minus 1. I will use this Y as an input for my smooth step node. I no longer need this preview, so delete. Now I have an entire video about smooth step. You should definitely check it out. But just a TLDR, smooth step node returns 0 if this input value is less than this edge 1. It will return 1 if this input value is greater than this edge 2. And for values that are in between the edges will be interpolated using Hermit interpolation. So basically I have positive values at the top and the rest is all 0. I can fine tune it by adjusting this edge 2. I will feed this from the actual graph so I will create a new float property. Call it zenith blend. Give default value of 0 0.2. Drag it in and feed it into the edge 2. You could also create another property to control this edge 1 to have even more control. But I am happy with this 0. Okay, I will use this as my sky part. For the ground part, I can directly use another smooth step, but just to keep things simple, I will take the Y values and feed it into negate node. Negate node simply multiplies the input with minus 1. As the result, I will get positive values at the bottom and negative at the top. Then I will use another smooth step node and feed this as input values. Now same thing as before, I want to control this edge 2 from the actual subgraph, so create another float property, call it nadir blend, give default value of 0 0.1, drag it in and feed it into the edge 2. And I will use this as ground part. Alright, I have sky and ground, only thing missing is the horizon. For that, I will simply add these two together. Now here I could use another smooth step, but I found that power function works best to control the horizon. Therefore, first I will take this output and feed it into one minus node. One minus node, as the name suggests, subtracts the input from one. So basically, one minus the input. As a result, I will get the inverted colors. Then I will take the output and feed it into the power node. Power node simply goes A raised to B and it will simply darkens the value which are less than 1 as I increase the power. I would like to control the power from the shader graph so you guessed it, create another float property. Call it horizon blend. Give default value of 1 drag it in 
and feed it into the power. Alright, now that I have sky, horizon and ground, it is time to color them. For that I will create three color properties and give them some default color. Now I will simply multiply sky color with sky part. Horizon color with horizon part. And ground color with ground part. Then simply just add these three together. Now due to all these additions, final values may go beyond 1. I don't want that so I will take this output and feed it into saturate node. Which is a fancy name for a node that just clamps the values between 0 and 1. Alright, now I have the simple skybox color. I will select this output node, open up the graph inspector. In the node setting tab, I can tweak this inputs. I will rename this to color and for a skybox there is no transparency so I will just change its type to vector 3. Then take this output and feed it into the color socket. Then to calculate sky's UVs to add clouds, stars etc. This direction can be quite handy. Therefore I will add a new input pin, call it sky direction, set its type to vector 3. Take this normalized nodes output and feed it into the sky direction. Let me just add a redirect node so you can actually see the connection. Save the subgraph and if you have any questions you can always ask me in the comments. Also you are still with me means you are enjoying this video so you might as well hit that like button. It will help me a lot. Alright, now let's make an actual shader graph. Right click, create, shader graph. Now pay attention here, select this built in and unlit shader graph. It doesn't matter if you are on HDRP or URP, you have to use built in, otherwise, Skybox shader won't work, which honestly still baffles me to this day. Anyway, I will give a proper name and open it up. Now because I've created a subgraph, I can search for that here. It will give you a node to have basic skybox. Then here you can easily set up some complex logic for your skybox, like stars, clouds, northern lights, etc. Check out my skybox series for some ideas. I will take this color and feed it into the base color block. Then to control these inputs from the inspector, I will create three float properties and three color properties. Also I want the float properties as slider so set the mode to slider which goes from 0 up to let's say 10. Drag it in and feed it into the zenith blend. Do the same thing for the rest. Then save the subgraph. You can get the subgraph file from the Patreon page by the way. Then I need to create a material that uses the shader. So select the shader graph file, right click, create, rendering, material, give a proper name. Then to apply this material, go to lighting window, which you can get by window, rendering, lighting, or by simply hitting control 9. Then go to the environment tab in the skybox material slot, assign the material or you can simply drag and drop it in the empty space of your scene. Ok, I have a procedural skybox and I can tweak the look from the inspector as well. Pretty cool. And that's how you can create a simple procedural skybox. Now I suggest you should save this subgraph somewhere in your shader library. It will serve you as a template for more complex effects. 
For more effect ideas, you should check out this playlist and I'll see you in the next one.